15 of Tales from West Gardena, Maine. I'm at my buddy's house, John Mash, on one of his many tractors. He's got all kinds of equipment, uh, and I'm trying to think of a story about John. There's so many of them. Someone said to me once, how do you remember everything, all those stories that are in your head? I said, hey, 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 I may be getting older, but I'm as sharp as ever. I'm like a razor. I can remember things that never even happened. So anyway, just to let you know, John was once an entrepreneur beyond the famine industry. John used to sell World Book encyclopedias back in the day. Yeah, he had an old pickup truck, beat up. He didn't have a lot of money, but he had a lot of enthusiasm. So he drove all the way down to Kittry and started up Route 1. And every town he'd come to, he'd stop and sell a ton of World Book encyclopedias. And then he started noticing that all along the way on the coast of Maine is once in a while there's a ferry. And them ferry boats go out to islands where there's lots of people with time on their hands looking for books. So John would go out and do it. But the problem with John is that he was always just a little bit late. And you miss a ferry, they're gone for an hour. You gotta sit there and wait, that's that's lost sales time. So John tried to pick up the pace and get on time and he finally worked his way to uh, mid coast area up around Camden and he looked at his schedule and he could see that the island ferry to Islesboro was just about to leave and it's only about 10 minutes north of Camden. So he put that truck right in high gear. He was going full bore up Route 1, about 25 miles an hour. He come whistling up over that last hill, looked down to his right and he could see that ferry boat was about three feet away from the dock, he panicked put it right in high gear, right around on, slid in sideways into a parking area, jumped out, grabbed all the books he could carry, A and B, run tight as he could across that parking lot. The people that were there said, you never see nothing quite so cunning as John Mash running full bore and launching himself into the air, sailing over the open water, landing on that steel deck, had you can hit a deck and survive it, slid right up, trigged the wheel of a Chevy, pretty good shape. Well, the captain of the ferry come over and kicked him, see if he's still alive. And John picked his head off the deck, and he goes, geez, he said, that stung. Well, the captain said, you know, if you'd have waited two or three more minutes, we'd have been docked. There you have it, dear. Pay attention to detail. Eh? And uh, take care of each other. We all need each other. Eh? Welcome to uh, a stone wall in the great state of Maine. And welcome to day 16 of Tales from West Gardner, Maine. This stone wall tells a tale all by itself. Lots of things happening back in the day. But one of the things that came to mind today about a story that kind of popped into my head was a friend of mine teaches school locally, and he told me that one day he had lunch duty. Now, if you're teachers out there know, lunch duty means you stand in line and urge your kids forward and move them along, make sure they get their meal and get their seat and have a good, nutritious day. Well, my buddy looked over, and he could see that the line had stopped. And this kid named Billy was standing there staring at the sign of choices. There were only two choices, a chicken burger or a chicken quesadilla. Pretty easy, two choices. So he walked over and he said, Billy, you've got to move along. You've got to make a choice. It's a chicken burger or a chicken quesadilla. What's it going to be? You've got to move along because uh, the other children want to eat. If you can't make a choice, just step out of line. Then he realized, oh, Billy's not the best reader and quesadilla ain't the easiest word in the world. So he said, I'll tell you what, Billy. Your choices are a chicken burger or a chicken quesadilla. You understand? Billy said, yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. He said, well, what's it going to be? you got to move along here. you got to make a choice or get out of line. Billy said, all right, guys, just don't push me. My, my choice is to get, it's a chicken burger or a chicken quesadilla. All right, all right, I'll tell you what. I'll take the chicken and the quesadilla. Yeah? Hey, take care of each other out there. We need each other right now. Love each other. Yeah? Hi there. Welcome to day 16 of Tales from West Garden of Maine. Just uh, getting this tractor ready to do some uh, work on the back 40. It's a crank start, so I'm getting my shoulder ready. Anyway, I, uh, I'm, at, I'm at John Mash's place, but I get to think about a mutual friend of ours, uh, Mert Hickey. Now, growing up in this area, Mert Hickey was uh, always working hard. He works in the woods, has for years, but before that he was a paper boy. And we got all kinds of, of summer places in West Garden, a big lake right here where people come in from away. And Mert would deliver papers all over town year round. But in the summertime, it would double because all those camps on that lake would all want their paper in the morning. So Mert would have to put on about, oh, I don't know, twice as many miles on his bike. Well, every morning, 
he'd go to Fuller's Market and he'd stack up the papers in his basket on his bike and he'd pedal all over town and all the way around the lake delivering all those papers. It always went well. He did a great job. He was got awards. One thing was kind of weird though. Every morning when he showed up, there'd be a stack of papers. He'd cut them open to get them ready to stack in his basket. And every morning, some kids from away, you know, from big states like New Hampshire, they'd show up and they want to spend the summer here with their parents so for a month or so. And, and uh, they'd pick on the little kid that married Hickey. They'd make fun of him. They'd say, hey, uh, kid, uh, come here. I want, I want to play a game with you. Brent would wander over and say, yeah, what can I do for you? He said, well, uh, we got a nickel and a dime. Which coin do you want? Of course, Brent would grab the nickel every time. It was twice as big. Ain't that numb? They would laugh all the way back to their camp. Oh, that local kid's so numb. He goes on and, oh, ain't it stupid? He takes that nickel to us half as much. They'd laugh all the way home. Well, it wasn't right, but they did it every day all summer long. Finally, at the end of the summer, the man that run the store come walking over and he says, uh, Matt, before them kids show up this morning, I want to explain something to you. When they play that game with you, the nickel and the dime, I want you to take the dime. It's worth twice as much money. Matt says, yeah. But if I do that, they're going to stop playing the game. There you go. If you're dealing with Matt, be careful. But take care of each other out there. Love you. Yeah. Welcome to day 18 of Tales from West Garden of Maine. I'm out here at the lake this morning and it got me to thinking. I remember that time a few years ago when the fishing was pretty poor right here at the lake this one particular summer. And Mert was doing some guiding, my buddy Mert Hickey. And he was coming home with boatloads of fish with his sports every day. Huh, the other guides were some upset because they couldn't spin a thread. They couldn't find a fish. So they figured Mert was doing something wrong, probably something illegal. So they checked with the local warden, and the warden said, well, I'll go down check with him. He went down here and met with Mert in plain clothes, undercover, made arrangements to go fishing, see what Mert was doing. Well, they went out on the pond and dropped the hook. Mert reached down the bottom of the boat, flipped the top off a box, took out a stick of dynamite, lit it, threw it over the side, and when it exploded, the fish just kind of twitched on the surface, all stunned. <laughs> Mert grabbed his net and fished him aboard, no problem. And then he looked over. The, the warden was apoplectic. He was going crazy. He said, I can't believe what you're doing. That was dangerous and it's illegal. And he's fishing around trying to find his badge so he can rest Mert on the spot. Well, before he can even find his badge, Mert reached down, he flips the top off that box again, grabs another stick of dynamite, lights it, hands it to the warden and said, you going to talk or are you going to fish? My hunch is he went fishing. Yeah. Take care of each other. Yeah.